and welcome to Messy Church Online. Have you ever heard this hymn? All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The Lord God made them all. Today we're going to be having a look at the Christian story of creation. It helps us imagine how God might have made the world. It's a wonderful poetic story that we find in the beginning of the Bible. We've got lots of different crafts and activities to get you thinking about all the wonderful things there are in the world. So let's get started with Messy Church, bright and beautiful. God made animals and insects. When a baby giraffe is born, it's already six feet tall. Do you know how tall you are? Here you can make an amazing giraffe that is exactly the same height as you. For this activity, you'll need a long roll of paper, a giraffe head and body, which you can print off the internet or draw yourself, scissors, glue, tape, some pens and a tape measure. Now you can either print a giraffe's head and a giraffe's body, or you could draw your own on pieces of paper. I've printed these ones out to make life easier. Unroll your long roll of paper a little way and stick the giraffe's body to the top of the white paper, facing upwards, just like that. Now you need to unroll your paper some more and you're going to do some measuring. You can either measure how tall you are and then measure that from the bottom of your giraffe upwards or you can lie down on your piece of paper, making sure that your feet are where the giraffe's feet are. Make a note on your piece of paper where your head is, when you either measure out the right amount of paper, or if you're lying down where your head is on the paper. Then stick the giraffe's head so that its head is level with yours. Now take some pens and draw the whole of your giraffe's neck down from the top. You need to make sure that it matches the bottom of the neck where it joins the body. You can add some spots on your giraffe's neck and when you're done you can colour it in. I'm making sure that my neck joins up on the body as well as at the top. Now you should have a giraffe measuring from the top of its head right down to its neck all the way to its feet that is exactly the same height as you. Add your name and today's date to your giraffe so you have a measure of how tall you are today. These are some of the giraffes we made during our in-person messy churches. I wonder why there are so many different animals in the world. God made air and sky and here you can make a spinning hot air balloon. For this activity you will need five pieces of coloured paper in the shape of balloons. Make sure they're all the same by using the same template for each. You'll also need a small piece of an old toilet roll holder, three small pieces of string or twine, sellotape, scissors and a glue stick. Start off by folding all of your balloon shapes in half. When you've folded them, separate them out again so that you have five separate shapes. Now you're going to use the glue stick to glue one half of a balloon to a half of another so that it looks like this. Repeat this until you've used up all your balloon pieces, gluing one half to a half of another. When you're done, it should look like this. So it looks 3D. Take your three pieces of string, wool or twine, and you're going to use the first one to make a little loop and stick it to the top of your balloon. With the other two, you're going to stick one end of them to two places on the bottom of your balloon. Now you have made a hot air balloon that will spin round in the wind. 
If you have time, you can use pens or crayons to decorate your balloon and make it look beautiful. Can you imagine what it would be like to be high up in the sky? I wonder what sort of things you might notice. I wonder why you think God made air and sky. God made earth and soil. Here you can make your very own Build a Beetle game. You'll need a piece of white card, pens, scissors and some dice. The first thing you're going to do is draw your beetle. You could draw your own or you could do what I've done and print one off the internet. Use your pens to make it the most colourful and interesting beetle that you've ever seen. When you finish, turn your beetle over and draw shapes around all its different parts like this. It helps to hold it up to the light so you can see through your card. Number these pieces from one to six, just like this. Pause the video if you need to. Cut around the heavy dark lines to make seven beetle pieces. Now you're ready to play. You can play this game on your own or with a friend. You need to throw a six to start. That will allow you to place your biggest body piece. There's my number six piece. Now each time you throw the dice, see what number it lands on and you can build that part of your beetle. Notice that some of the numbers you need to throw twice. If you're playing with somebody else, make sure you're taking it in turns. How many throws does it take to build your beetle? If you're playing with someone else, who will build their beetle first? I wonder what sort of creatures you know about who live or grow in the earth. God made seeds, plants, trees and beautiful flowers. Here you can make an amazing paper flower. For this activity you'll need scissors, glue and tape, a circle of yellow card and some strips of coloured paper. Choose what colour you'd like to make your flower and choose some strips of paper in that colour. I think I'm going to use pink and purple to make this flower. Now take each strip of paper one at a time, fold it over and give it a little squeeze so it keeps its shape but don't fold it down too hard. You're going to take glue and glue the ends of your paper together so that it sticks. Do this for all your pieces of paper. Now take your yellow circle of card or paper and cover it in glue on one side. Now one at a time you can stick the strips of paper on to make the petals of your flower. You might need to add a bit more glue from time to time. When you turn it over, your flower looks like this. And if you want to, you can add even more petals to make your flower thicker and fuller. What beautiful paper flowers. I wonder what your favorite kind of flower is. I wonder why God made flowers. Here are some flowers we made during our in-person messy churches. enjoyed all those crafts and activities. Now it's time for our celebration service. We have really enjoyed being creative today and that's because we serve a God who is also very creative. Let's hear the first of the creation stories in the Bible. In the beginning there was nothing, nothing but God. Then God spoke, let there be light. And there was light. God separated light from darkness and called them day and night. God saw the light and said, it's good. That was the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome above the earth. God separated the water on earth from the water above. He called it sky. 
God saw the sky and said, it's good. That was the second day. Then God said, let there be dry land. He said, let there be plants and trees which grow seeds and fruits. And trees, plants and grass grew all over the land. God saw it all and said, it's good. That was the third day. God said, let there be lights in the sky, the sun to light the day and the moon and stars to light the night. God saw it all and said, it's good. That was the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters be full of fish and the sky full of birds. So he filled the seas and the rivers with fish and the sky with birds. God saw them and said, it's good. That was the fifth day. Then God said, let there be living creatures. He made the animals and then he made people. He blessed the people and told them to care for the wonderful world he had given them. God said, it's all good. That was the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. No more creating. And that's how God created the heavens and the earth. I wonder if you've heard that story before. Some Christians believe this story literally, that this is exactly how God made the world in six days. Other Christians understand this story more symbolically. There is truth in this story, in that it reminds us that all things depend on God for their existence. But the story is more of a poem, a way of imagining and exploring how things might have been. You'll need to decide for yourself what you think about this story. But however you understand it, it tells us this truth, that God is behind the world in some way and everything in it, and that it's our job to share the care of our world with God. So now it's time for our messy prayers. We are in the season of Lent. Did you know that Lent is an old word for springtime? Let's give thanks to God for the different signs of spring we see in the world around us. If you go outside, you'll find all sorts of flowers, daffodils, purple crocuses. You might even see signs of insect life, maybe a bee. Some of the trees are just starting to come into blossom. You might notice the birds singing louder or earlier than before. Out in the fields you might spot newborn lambs. Or in the pond frog spawn. If you're really lucky out in the fields, you might see a hare. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of your world and the signs of spring all around us. Help us to live as one family and care for everything you have made. Amen. We always finish Messy Church with the Messy Grace. If you've done this before, you know what to do. First, you hold out your hands as if you're getting an amazing present. Then you put your hand on your heart as if you're saying, I love you. Then you open your arms out wide as if you were gonna give someone a great big hug and bring them up and finish with an amen. If you know the words, join in too. You'll find them on the bottom of the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks so much for joining Messy Church Bright and Beautiful today. Messy Church returns in April with two special services for Easter. Messy Church Living Palms is on Palm Sunday the 2nd of April, 3 o'clock at St John's Church. And Messy Church New Life is on Good Friday the 7th of April, 10am to 12 noon. You will be really welcome. Hope to see you there. See you next time and take care. Bye.